Okay. It's time to fight. I had a great time with the beverages tier list. I had a great time with the... What was the other tier list we did? Every breakfast food. Um, let's get a little bit more personal. Let's get a little bit more ad hominem, okay? Let's rank every career ever. Now, there's only like 55 careers here, okay? Something like that. So this is obviously not every career ever, but I had to get you to click on the video somehow. I am going to rank these careers, but here's what I'm going to say, okay? I'm not going to rank them based on like how good your life is if you do it. I'm going to rank them based on how good I would be at the job or how, how happy I would be at the job or how miserable I would be at the job. So I think there's a lot of great jobs that I'm just not cut out for. And I, I don't know if there's any like bad jobs that I'm cut out for, but either this, it, you're not, because people are like, you're going to get canceled for this because you're going to put nurse in like the D tier. No, it might be in the D tier, but mostly because I don't like to deal with other people at all, especially at, like right now, it seems like being a nurse is really hard. So this is mostly going to be like for, for me, and I'm interested to see how chat feels about the, the place where I place some of these. So like if we're starting, account manager, this isn't a descriptive job title, right? Like what does an account manager do? Don't say manage account. Like a bank account manager or like a, you, a sales account manager. This is a job that is, I don't mean this in a negative way, but I feel like this is a, a job that is made up in order to create a bureaucratic hierarchy. Where like when you get too many salespeople, you have to have an account manager so that the account manager can have an excuse to manage some of the salespeople. I think this is like a, this is a bureaucratic job. I'll be honest with you. I think that's, I, I would excel at this because it doesn't seem like there's any actual duties uh, that are, dare I say, difficult that are attached to this. Oh, it's that an account manager is one step higher than a project manager. Well, then that's impossible. I can't do that. You got to be pretty smart to be a project manager, you got to have experience in software engineering or construction. You're one level. But then like, isn't this one of those things like in the, in the software business, isn't it like the higher up you go, the less you need to know about how the sausage is made? Aren't you more like, like when you're, when you first get hired, you're building the fucking thing. And then when you've been there for 20 years, you're like, let's go, guys. We got, we got catered Quiznos today. Catered Quiznos and uh, Sean Paul's going to sing a song at the office party tonight. Isn't it? Because I think I could do that. I'm a project manager. I literally play Super Auto Pets all day. I'm going to be honest. I think I would be like B tier. I don't know what this is. But if he, as long as I'm dealing with other people in a corporate environment where I have some power over them, I think I would be fine. A paralegal. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what this is. This is like a lawyer, but not. It's like you're a lawyer's assistant, but not a... Like, okay, don't cancel me, okay? I, we probably don't use the word secretary anymore, unless we're talking about treasury secretary. Janet Yellen, took me a second, sorry. But this is a, a, a law secretary slash assistant is also known as a paralegal. Or is it a, it's an assistant with some legal training? It's more sophisticated than that. Paralegal is to lawyer as nurse is to doctor. Okay. In that case, I, I don't think I would be good at this. This might sound crazy. I think I would be a better lawyer than a paralegal. At least like when it, if it came to trials and stuff like that. I think I'm a good public speaker. I think I can make convincing arguments. I understand you need to have an exhaustive knowledge of the law. 
There are parts of it that I would not be good at. Paperwork being very specifically filed, detail-oriented, deadlines, not always necessarily my strong suit, but I think I would be a better paralegal than a lawyer. So I personally, I'm going to put paralegal down here in C. Now, a copywriter is someone who writes marketing material. This is something that I think I'm, I have some acumen for. I'm good with words. Um, I feel like, wait, you, you might not know this, in high school, in careers class, you had to write like an essay and do some research about like what you wanted to be when you grew up. I said writer. This was before like the internet destroyed that for everybody except for um, Shonda Rhimes. Like I, I thought that maybe I could be like a fiction writer or something like that. As, as a word cell and speaking for word cells, I thought that would be a job of mine, which means inevitably if I was good enough at writing uh, to write well, but not good enough to actually be able to sell print media, I probably would have ended up working in advertising. I think I could be, if I'm being honest, I think I could be like an S tier copywriter. And I don't put things in the S tier willy nilly. I don't, I don't shove it there just to inflate my own ego. I, I think that this is a job that would, would appeal to my natural sensibilities. Human resources, I think, how many times have I talked about my disdain for human resources in my limited corporate experience? I do want to say that I understand why human resources is necessary. When a company reaches a certain size, you need to have a department that is like internal affairs. You need to have the cops that are cops for the cops. But my experience with HR, in very limited experience with HR, is that, I mean, like I always tell the story of how I, I worked at an office for a little bit longer than a summer. And I thought I was a genius because I would take lunch at like 3 p.m. Because if I worked from 9 to 3, then I took an hour lunch. I only had like a 45 minute second half of the day after lunch. When I came back from lunch, the day was almost over. It was basically like I, I cut my day in half psychologically, harming no one else. I thought I was so smart. Then it was like a 30 person office. One day I came back uh, from lunch and there was an email in everybody's inbox, like a reply all that just said, uh, hey, just so everybody knows, the permitted lunch times are between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. We need to have like all hands back at some parts of the day in case we call like a surprise meeting or something like that. They could have just talked to me, you know, mano a mano and been like, hey, could you start taking your lunch in this window and then save me the embarrassment? Instead, they were like, no, it's got to be escalated through the proper channels. Probably the CEO had to sign off on it. And then... Uh, they sent me, they sent an email to the whole company. Just like everyone knew they were talking about me. I don't think I would be good at this. I think I would be the person that would, in my head at least, I would be like, why don't we just let them take lunch at three? They're a summer student. They're just doing data entry anyway. Who gives a shit? Also, like in terms of like efficiency, they're getting more done than the lifers. So like maybe just cut them a little bit of slack or talk to them in private. Anyway, so personally, I think I would be bad at this. I also, I, I think I would be worse at event planning than I would be at human resources. My standards are too low. Like, I'm, and, and this is going to sound a little bit psychotic, but I mean this sincerely. Like, I don't need an event to be happy. A plate of food and some good people is like, that's, if you were like, now we've got Sting up on stage, I would be like, that doesn't even add to the experience. I'm not saying you couldn't make that, you couldn't find an artist or something that would do that for me, but like, I'm not the kind of guy who, when I walk into a place, I'm like, oh, the balloons match like the accent pieces. You know, I'm just like, this is a box. This is a room. This is a chair. This is food. I'm very like, I guess, utilitarian there. And also, I'm terrible at the coordination and the detail-oriented stuff. I would not be a good event planner. And, and then having to deal with, like, 
people that are like, oh, it's my daughter's bat mitzvah. Like, I need to have specifically these kinds of, cu these kinds of cups. I'd be like, go get Ben. Who cares? We had red, you red solo cups aren't good enough. You want 800 specifically like yellow solo cups? Eat me. I would be bad at this. You are going to laugh. When I was assembling that barbecue, I was like, I know I've had this take before. We need a better class of technical writer. Here's the thing. I don't know. The companies that are making these manuals, I get it, okay? If you And I hate to go back to this shape rotator word cell thing. If you are a shape rotator, I'm not coming for you. I'm happy for you. But like the manuals for building things with your hands are made for shape rotators. It's all pictures and diagrams. And like some, I was looking at one of the diagrams and then there was a circle surrounding something and it said 2X. And then there was a little something in the circle. And I was like, is that double magnification? Is that uh, you have to repeat this two times? Like, what does it mean? I feel like a shape rotator doesn't even need the manual. They would just look at it and be like, I basically get the gist of how this is going to go, right? Whereas me, when I'm looking up these manuals, I'm like, I need you to actually have like the picture and then step by step also be like, now you are going to take two A screws and you're going to place the A screws in the holes on this side of the barbecue. And like, if... I think they should have one manual that's like if you're a picture brain and one manual that's like your word brain. How much is that going to add to your overhead for the price of a barbecue? Like like a dollar a barbecue? Or like an another thing, you, you've assembled a fucking billion of these barbecues at the factory. You couldn't just film someone doing one and walking through it in their head. Like, and then you're going to take this screw and put it here. You couldn't film one video tutorial, put it up on YouTube. And then the 50,000 non-shape rotators who are assembling this barbecue on a cold Saturday could just watch it and follow along. Anyway, I honestly, I think I would be a good technical writer. I think you need both. I think you need the shapes, like you need the diagrams, and you also, you need some text, or at least like an audio book where they tell you what the, you're supposed to do. So, I, I think I would be a good technical writer, because I, if I understand how something works, which I think you have to do in order to be a technical writer in the first place, I can explain it to other word cells. I am, I do not explain things badly. Here's, I explain things in the most segmented, stepwise way possible. People are bad at taking instructions. They go, don't tell me the part where I have to put my foot in the shoe. Just tell me how to tie it. And I'm like, well, if you tie the shoe without putting your foot in it, then you just got a little bow tie on the ground. It doesn't do anything for you. They always want to skip steps. They're always like, yeah, yeah, you know, get to the part specifically that I don't know how to do, but I can't articulate specifically what the problem is. And I'm, I don't want to actually have to go through this, the, the three steps that'll take five seconds in order to get to the real step. Instead, I just want to be there, you know? I think I would be like an A-tier technical writer. I do. You can doubt it if you please. It's, it's you, you know. Is that what a technical writer does? Do they write instruction manuals? Look, I don't know why journalist is in quotes, but I will also say, like, I mean, this is basically what I do. So I got to put myself at least in the A tier, but I think I got to stick myself in the S tier. You know, whether it was speaking or writing, I think I could, I could just do this. Also, like, I mean, I, I, I will accept some arguments here, but I don't know what the argument is going to be. You're not a journalist? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I'm a journalist, I think, in quotation marks. I'm not a journalist with it like a, you know, I wouldn't put it on a business card, but I would be like, you know, if, if you're going to add sussy quotation marks, I'd be like, yeah. 
I do interviews sometimes, years ago. That's journalism. Film editor. Oh, man. This, it was made for me. Um, not good. I would not be good at this. Every time I ever had to do a video project for like an English class or something like that, it was always shot horribly. It was always just like a camera filming dialogue cut. Camera filming dialogue cut. There, I never had any desire for a stylistic flair or an acumen or anything like that. It's, it's, I, I think I would be, and I'm, it takes so long. I can't maintain that kind of focus for that long. I do not think I would be good at being a film editor, for sure. I don't think I would be good at much in the filmmaking process. Photographer? Listen, how hard could it be? Like the camera's doing all the work. I'm not trying to be rude at all, but like, it's okay, listen, listen. I don't understand photography to some extent. And that, that's a me problem. It's not like a, a photographer problem. But I don't know if I've like ever seen a good photo. I've seen like good photojournalism. But I don't know if I've ever seen a photo where I, anytime someone's like, check out this awesome photo. It's always like sunset looking out from English Bay in Vancouver. And I'm like, I've seen it. I've seen it a hundred times. Or it's a silver platter with monster energy drinks right next to Lake Louise in Banff. This is so many a horrid take. I just don't get it, man. Like when I see a photo, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm like, it doesn't strike me as art. It just strikes me as a document, which is fine. But like, I mean, okay, and like, look, there's other parts of photography. Like, I think it's pretty obvious I think it would be a bad photographer considering I don't even understand it. But I also think that if you're a photographer, you got to do a lot of stuff that is annoying, right? You got to shoot a lot of events. You got to shoot a lot of weddings for pseudo strangers. You got to, you know, shoot christenings and stuff like that. Got to talk to strangers. You got to have like a... A website and did you know do marketing and stuff like that? that sounds kind of annoying. Try to take some pictures, you'll understand then. Well, like I, I'd take like a selfie, what well, not a selfie, but like my wife will be like, take a photo of our baby. But every photo I take of our baby is like almost exactly the same. Like she's exactly centered in the frame horizontally and vertically. I I try to facilitate like a you know, like a smile or a laugh or something like that. But this, oh, that's, oh, that's boring. They're all the same. Oh, all my shots with the sunset in the background are totally different. Well, look at it. It's a tree. It's a damn tree with the leaves falling off because it's the autumn. Really makes you think. Look, it's the Lionsgate Bridge. I took, I took this great photo of the Lionsgate Bridge today. Well, guess what? Is the sun going down in the background? Who would have thought? I just don't get it, man. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. I'm just like, I don't, I just don't get, I don't get painting either. But with painting, I'm like, there's also like a craft. I'm like, whoa, how did you paint that? So like, if you were a photographer in like 1910, I would look at your photo and be like, I bet that was like tough, man. I feel like we had much lower standards back then. Cause even just taking like a photograph of people standing still required like a, uh, a light bulb that exploded and had a sphere inside of it the diameter of like four inches or something like that. I just, look, okay. I'm, I don't think I would be a good photographer. I apologize. <laughs> I'm, you know what I'm going to, hold on. I, I'm going to R of Photography on my phone right now. And I'm sorting by top this month. 
r slash photography top this month, okay? I'm, and I'm giving you a live narration. I could be wrong. How do you deal with people pointing out that your photos are not real because of a professional camera or Lightroom? Just lost a client because people are working for free. Not everyone will like your photos and that's okay. Clients want their images deleted from... So what the hell? This is like a support group, man. Can I go to r slash photos? r slash photoshop battles? Magical photo of the train this morning, Chicago, Illinois. Look, it's a, it's a photo of a train. Like, it's cool. But like, so what? I could have taken that photo. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe I'm overestimating my abilities. That's because like, I, I'm not an idiot. Okay. Like I get like, I'm obviously wrong. I just don't know why. Obviously it takes skill to be a photographer. But like prove it. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is prove it. Anyway, public relations. I think I would be like kind of okay at public relations on like not community management, which is a different thing. Like if I had to work for like, uh, you know, Bungie. And my job all day was just getting death threats because people didn't like like the stats on the new guns or something like that. I would not enjoy that or be good at it. But like a public relations expert, maybe not expert, but professional, I think I could do it. Because here's the thing. People are like, oh, you're like, you just got canceled for your photography take. Here's, here's my PR take on that. Don't acknowledge it. Just plow right on ahead. Tomorrow, you don't even remember because somebody's going to say something even dumb. Isn't that most of PR? When you have like a, a really bad day in PR, don't you just lay low and then wait for somebody else to say something asinine on the news and get canceled and then hope that they start arguing back? They soak up all the social media attention and then a year later, you just pop up and you're like, I'm back, bitches. Like, isn't that... I don't know. I look okay. People are saying this is not like where you should you you would not be A tier. Okay, I'll I'll put myself in the B. I think I can handle the B. I think I think it's any job that is mostly word based. I think is going to be hard to get below a B for me. Social media, I think it's kind of like the same thing. Like, I actually would be like kind of ass at producing content for social media. I know what you're, you're going to say, like, that's what you do right now. But like, I, don't, I, I couldn't cut like cool videos to be like, check out the new Monster Energy drink or whatever. Obviously, I'm not a good photographer. I think I could write some, you know, hello, uh, fellow kids kind of tweets. I mean, I don't think I would be bad at it. I don't think I would be good. I think I, I, this, I would be in like the B tier here as well, to be honest with you. Sales rep is kind of like, that's interesting to me. I am a natural introvert. I can talk pretty well, but I'm not good at the... I'm like, once I get under your skin... I think we have, I tend to have a good rapport with people. They tend to enjoy my company. We get along. It's good. The first 30 seconds of the interaction, I am maladroit. I don't know how to ingratiate myself with somebody and, you know, uh, make them feel like we're kind of friends without coming across as slimy and stuff like that. I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of like a guy. So I don't know if I would, I feel like being a sales rep, you got to be kind of like gregarious. You got to be a little bit of like a, not a bullshitter necessarily in like a negative way, but you know, you got to be, you know, there's just some like one in 10 guys is just like that kind of guy where like, as soon as you see them, they're like, Hey buddy, how are you? And like give you, they make you feel like you've known them like your whole life. 
even though you've never met them before, I'm not one of those 10 guys. So I think I, I think I would find myself in like the, probably in the C tier, to be honest. Yeah, Dan is one of those guys. 100%. Like, I think Dan could, like, be at a part. When he meets people, it doesn't feel like they're both acknowledging that, like, this is an awkward meeting. I think it's like, you know, he treats you like you've been lifelong friends the first time he meets you. I'm not like that. I'm like, hey. Then they're like, oh, what were you guys talking about? And I'm like, uh, I don't really want to get into it. I think, <laughs> trying to think of the, the office analogy that would work. I don't know if there is one. I don't want to say that, that uh, Dan is like uh, Todd Packer. But, you know, he's got that sort of built-in gregariousness. Anyway, I think that's fair. There's way too many, like, finance careers on this. So, like, I don't... I, I believe that a finance rotational anal uh, analyst is somebody that in, in the markets, there's multiple sectors, you know, energy, tech, blah, 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 healthcare. They rotate kind of around from one to another as, t as time goes on. You know, like, did, like here's what I'll, I'll say about like all the, I think I would be actually a good financial analyst or not financial analyst but financial advisor because this basic flow chart of how to use your money is very sensible at least that's what i believe you know you get an emergency fund you uh then you go into tax advantage accounts you buy low uh, MER index funds. And then after that, if you're like insanely wealthy, then you can start to talk about other stuff. But for like most people, like that's, that's all you're going to do. But everything else here, that's like, you know, financial analyst. And th there was some more that were corporates. Well, maybe not corporate strategy, but I'm like, I like, I mean, I don't think I would be a, like a good uh, financial analyst. Cause I don't think that shit is like real kind of we don't need to get in i guess it's real you need financial analysts in order to fulfill the efficient market hypothesis so that there's that information is out there for other people to act upon but as an individual investor i don't it, i don't think that it's it, i'm cut out for it because i kind of think it's like a little bit of is statistically invalid but anyway pe people talk people talk so i don't know a financial a finance rotational analyst it's, I guess what I'm getting at is when it comes to being like a financial analyst, I don't necessarily think it's reasonable to be good or bad at a job because I don't think your success is determined by the effort you put in or the skill you have. I think essentially they put 100,000 ping pong balls into a pachinko machine and a couple of people end up on the Kathy Wood side for like a couple of years where they're doing a great job and then a, you know, a couple of people end up on the other side where like statistically they're just like garbage and then 99% of people exist basically governed by the rules of mathematics and, and the law of small numbers anyway so like I don't know with that in mind let's put this in a C <laughs> engineering rowation any help on this one can I get some helpers any helpers in the chat I mean, I don't know what engineering rotation is either. No help, no help. I am an engineering rotationist and I will not help you. I don't know what this, I'm just going to leave it here, okay? You build circles. Okay. An administrative assistant, I'm going to be honest with you. I would be an A-tier administrative assistant, but I would hate my life probably. I think I would be... This is basically... I've done this. You write emails. You write memos. You run out to Staples to buy business supplies that have run out. You make phone calls that your boss doesn't want to make. I've done this. Is I'm not going to say it's not hard because some people would probably find it difficult but like 
is not that complicated, but it would probably make you want to die. I don't, I'm not just trying to farm like based comments in chat, but like being an assistant basically just means you have to do most of the shit that your boss doesn't want to do, which is the shit that is spiritually hard to deal with in the first place. It's basically like they, they are offloading the shittiest parts of their job that they can offload onto somebody else. So you're basically, I don't want to, because I don't believe that the assistant is doing the boss's job 100%, but they're doing the parts that the boss doesn't want to do. Or that, okay, maybe it's also like, oh, I'm the CEO, so like I have to call, um, you know, Joe Biden right now. Can you answer my emails? But like, I don't know, there's basically like, I have a great rapport with David, but this is basically what I have David do. I would be dead without him sometimes. He sets up the, the sponsor stuff. He writes out like a timetable of like, here's what you got to do. He writes out like a list of things you got to do. And still, I read it, I glance at it. Like I'm basically like a scumbag. So I, I understand it from both sides of the coin. So I, I think I... This is why, like, I've always talked about so many people, are, and this is more like event planning, too. So many people that stream are like, oh, if streaming ever, like, stops for me, I'm going to, um, like, become a influencer marketing worker. I, like, I would be dead. I know what it's like on the other side. You don't read the emails. You don't sign the forms. People want to send you money. All they need is, like, your bank account number. They're like, ah, they haven't replied to the email for, like, six months. You're like, please, I'm trying to send you money for the thing you already did that you didn't even read the email of what you were supposed to do in the first place. You just went, uh-huh, through, like, the whole phone meeting. So, like, I, I, I know what it's like on the other side. I don't want a part of it, but I think I would be okay at it. Anyway. I would be um, not a good firefighter. But I don't think I would be a D-tier firefighter. Let's assume I was in shape good enough to be a firefighter and we're talking about this position. What I'm about to say cannot possibly be true. But in this moment, as I say it, I, it feels true. I would rather go into a building that was a little on fire than be like a hairdresser and have to maintain 40 minutes of conversation with a client I didn't really know. I would rather be a barber than go into a raging inferno. And I understand as a firefighter, that's your responsibility. You don't want a firefighter that shows up and goes like, fuck that, you know, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're on your own. But like, I would, the most fires, I have to, any firefighters in the chat, look, I you're actually genuinely heroes. But like, I imagine the 80%, especially in the city, like 80% of firefighter calls are like, I mean, what, somebody opened the wrong door so the alarm went off and now you have to go check it out like at the building because 150 people evacuated? Yeah, shout out to firefighters. Cat stuck in a tree. <laughs> anyway. I mean, I don't think I would be good at it, but I'll give it like a C. I don't think I would be D at this. Like, I think I could be as good of a firefighter as a below average firefighter. There is no chance, even at my peak, am I going to be like an adequate film editor. There's no chance. With some work, I think I could, I could fit this into my personality, but it would be a long process, okay? Man, we got so far to go. Doctor, I don't know. Like, honestly, if we're talking about like, like a general practitioner... We're talking a family doctor. I don't think I would be very good at it. I think my personality is more like a surgeon, but 
I don't have the I don't have the hands or the patience for it. But definitely, I feel like a family doctor is more like a. I don't know what it. I have said too many takes about like family doctors where I'm like I, you know, I don't want to dig myself like a hole. But I feel like you got to be like fucked up to get a high standard of care at your family doctor. Like, if you go to your family doctor and shit's just a little off, they're just going to tell me to go home every time. I also, I, I don't know if I could deal, you're right, because I, I imagine, like, a lot of family doctors, you do, like, uh, you know, hey, you should, like, stop smoking, and then they come in, like, six months later, and they're like, oh, yeah, I've got a cough, and I'm like, well, are you still smoking? And they're like, yeah, and I'm like, well, you should really stop that. Like, I, did, I don't know, I, I think it would, I would find it annoying. I don't think I would be great at it. I, I, I think I'd probably be down here in the, in the D tier. <laughs> in all likelihood you need a, a people will die if you have this job tier yeah I don't think doctor would be in there like I, I don't think I would be like that as a doctor like I don't think I would be like you're fine just rub some Windex on it I think it would be the opposite like I would grind the healthcare industry to a halt because if people came in and they're like my tummy's hurt for three days I would be like we're getting you a CAT scan fucking today like it would I would be responsible for like 10% of all referrals in the province, despite being like 0.001% of the doctors. Which in its own way would, would make me a bad doctor, but not for everybody. Quality assurance. I don't, like, I'm so stupid when it comes to real careers that in my head, quality assurance is the person at a factory that watches gizmos come down the conveyor belt and picks out the ones that have like three legs instead of four. Is that correct? Not really. That's part of it. It's mostly in software. I honestly have no idea where I would... I'm, I'm just going to put this in the B tier. <laughs> just because I'm upset. It's mainly Excel spreadsheets and user stories. Okay, with that, honestly, I, I think I could be B tier there if, if we're going to generalize like that. I'll tell you, without a doubt, I think I would be an ass accountant. I'm embarrassed with like the emails and the documents that I send to my accountant. I want to apologize every year. I think I would I would be horrible at this. I also don't understand and I don't mean this in a negative way. I don't understand you have to be so smart to be an accountant, but I don't understand why because aren't you just putting numbers in the columns? And like, aren't you just put... Like, I, I feel bad when I send my accountant documents. Because I know that their job is basically to comb through these like shitty documents that are unformatted and like find numbers and then put the numbers in like the right spot on the sheet. But you got to be like really smart to be an accountant. I work in accounting, you would be fine. I don't know, man. Like, I'm really bad at accounting. Last day as an auditor feels good. Dude, honestly, I, that's what, kind of what I'm... If, if I was an auditor, I would have to die, I think. I don't think I... If someone was like, hey, your job is to go through, like, five years of receipts and statements for, like, this person, I would be like, you... I'll give you a hundred dollars to fucking shoot me right now. Just kill me. I would rather I after I finished it, I would be like, I'm glad I didn't die. But the before I started, I would be like, this task is so large. I would rather be dead. I think I would be a horrible accountant, without a doubt.
Would you rather be in a burning building? I would rather have a little fire. Not a lot. Like, that's really bad, but... Now, the flip side of this... And again, I'm acknowledging a lot of this is going to seem outright insane. But, like... I think I would be kind of like a decent actuary. Because I think, like, the... <laughs> You're insane? But, like... It's worse than accounting. I don't know, man. It's like isn't isn't being a, here's the thing an act, an accounting job is like all the data's behind you. There's a right or a wrong answer, and there's high stakes. An actuary is like all the data's behind you, but it could be decades before we could statistically prove whether or not your model is actually accurate. So as long as your model is convincing, I think you could skate by as like a good actuary and it'll take MetLife insurance like two decades to find out that actually you forgot to like carry a one or something like that. Not at all. It has to be a job with a human element to it. Otherwise, computers would already be doing it. They are? Well, then I think I would be good at it because I'm good at computers. <laughs> Maybe I'm arguing, you know, is a... Absurdio al reductio. Here's the thing, though. You know what I gotta know? People are like, look at how many tests you have to pass to be an actuary. Who makes the fucking test, though? Was it, like, the best actuary of all time? Was like, oh, here's my secret. You gotta, like, meet my standards? Because what if the tests are all fucked up in the first place and we're washing out some superstar actuaries just because they don't think conventionally? Myself included. I shit you not is my step uncle. I believe that. I don't know. It's my tier list. I'm going to be straight up with you. I think I'd be better as an actuary than as an accountant. I'm not saying it's an easier job. But I think I would... Like the idea of like... It's, it seems like more like fulfilling work for me than to be like... To, to be an actuary and be like, I'm looking at all this data in order to figure out like what the risk of someone with these lifestyle choices has of, you know, developing this disease or something like that. Versus like, hey, here's like all the corporate dinners we went on this year. Can you tell me how many of them I can write off without getting fucking audited by the IRS? Like that sounds like soul sucking. Being an actuary sounds like you're like doing like a guess the weight booth at the carnival. And you're wrong, you're like, okay, pick a prize, you know, like, big whoop. Uh, so honestly, I think I would be kind of not horrible. I would be better as a dentist than as a doctor. Let me explain. No small talk. The patient at the dentist's office never wants to small talk. It's the worst because your mouth is open. They ask you questions. You got to be like, do they even want me to respond? Do I respond without moving my mouth? Sometimes the dentist wants to talk. But if you are a, a dentist, I also, I think you're right that being a dentist is kind of like being a streamer. You get to make a joke. You probably have the same joke you can use on every patient. And then they, get, they can only react with emotes, basically. They can go, ah. Uh -huh, uh -uh. Like, that's it. Now, the actual studying, the... Well, I mean, I, I, okay, so I'm a shithead again. Isn't like 90% like of the time the dental assistant's doing like all the routine work and then the dentist just comes in to look at the x-rays when it's all over and then the dentist does like all the horrific shit like the surgeries and the you know implants and stuff like that. But for, like for a routine... Checkup and scaling, the dental assistant does all the work. I know, I have, I have family that are dentists. I know it's hard. 
Well, it's hard to become a dentist. They don't seem to act like it's actually hard to be a dentist. They talk about the student loans, like the amount of school that they had to go through. But I've never heard them be like, oh, it was a really hard day at work today. Like the tooth just wouldn't come out. You know, they're like, you know, I think it's just kind of like mouth Lego once you, once you get to that level, right? Again, this is not like how hard would it, you have to resist the notion of like, just because something takes a lot of school, it would be harder to do. That's obviously true, but we're assuming like, you drop me like fully qualified into the job, but with my existing personality. Also like, dude, we got to start giving people sunglasses at the dentist. Like I, they, my dentist now gives us sunglasses. Why weren't they doing that for like the 30 years before that? You just get a big blue light like in the center of your brain for like an hour. Ours has had sunglasses for over a decade. Well, yeah, mine too, but that a decade feels kind of recent to me. So, because I'm a, a old, but... I would honestly, I think I'd be a B tier dentist. Okay, we have to go faster. We're already going to be late if we don't go faster. A data analyst is kind of like an actuary that works for a government agency trying to figure out how likely you are to become the next Unabomber. Is this correct? This is not what Palantir does. Sometimes they work in every field. Statistical analysis. Honestly, I respect statistics. I would put myself in the B tier here. They're a math programmer. Okay, I'd put myself in the C tier. Stop drilling, you hit oil. What is a software researcher? Like, you can tell this is made by an engineer, right? Engineer, firmware engineer, environment engineer, web developer, or like a financial professional, execution trader, quant trader. It's anyway. You research software. Is this one of the super genius jobs? Where, like, software researcher sounds like you Wikipedia software but actually you like you're digging deep into the machine code no it's not this is a software engineering professor yes kind of <laughs> i don't even know what half these jobs are where's like you know milkman where's milkman it's algorithm design okay i'll tell you i could i could write the algorithm, probably, I could not design it. I don't get it. If you give me the steps, even if there's a hundred steps, I can memorize them and execute them. I could not come up with why the steps existed, why they're in this order, and what happens if you do step eight at step nine's position and vice versa. I just know that I'm, I'm a grunt and I follow the instructions. I think I would be not a good software researcher, but probably better than an accountant. A quant trader. So I'm pretty sure that a quant trader, it's a, it's a soft, not a software, it's a, a, like an equities trader, somebody that trades stocks, bonds, you know, commodities. I don't really, I know quant is quantitative. I think they're a quantitative analyst. They use technical analysis. I honestly, I just don't, like, why do you do this job um, any quants in the chat? Why do you do this job when you kn you're smart people, right? Like you know the the data, you know the burton Malkiel data. Statistically speaking, every time you trade, you're paying a premium, and the more people trade, it's like a 0.98 correlating trend line that the more you trade, the more you underperform the market index to begin with. They make bank though. But aren't you like, 
aren't you kind of just like like a, a ping pong ball getting sorted? You're like one data point that is... <laughs> I don't know why you believe that. Well, I believe in the efficient market hypothesis, okay? At least as an end user. But then there is like a part of me that is like, well, maybe part of the reason that the market is efficient is because you have people working as quants that sniff out any inefficiencies. And that's why they get paid the big bucks because, you know, these, these firms... Uh, or they get some arbitrage from having hired them. But then I'm like, well, if that's the case, then wouldn't the algorithms just outperform them because of the fact that the algorithms trade like instantaneously? But then I'm like, who makes the fucking algorithm? But I'm like, a quant trader doesn't make the algorithm. It's probably a software researcher that makes the algorithm. And then a quality assurance officer pours through the code to make sure that everything's okay. And then it's got to go through accounting. And then you're like, oh, you miscarried a one someplace. And then you got to go up to the copywriter that's here's how we're going to market the algorithm. It's all connected, man. I think quants do make the algos. Okay. I would not be good at that. Let's put that down there. Mechanic. I don't think we need to elaborate too much here. Um, I would be a horrible mechanic. I would be an absolutely terrible mechanic. I don't think there's a single aspect of the job I would excel at. And I don't like getting my hands dirty. So many things are in the D tier. To thine own self be true. Like, I don't, I, if you brought your, I get that you train. But like the, the concept of like you bringing your car into me and then being like, it kind of rattles above 70 kilometers an hour. Like, and me diagnosing what the problem is. I would be like, are you fucking crazy? I don't know how many, there's like a billion makes and models that are out there that are all configured like slightly differently. I can't even imagine. I, the one thing I will say that gives me a little hope is that's also how I felt about programming until I learned that programming is basically just code Lego to some extent. And now I'm like, I understand how you diagnose a problem in code, at least in a, on a conceptual level. But th this is like using your hands and your brain instead of just your brain. So like, I think this would be worse for me for sure, without a doubt. I would be a horrible industrial engineer. Uh, anything related to engineering except software engineering, I think I'll be ass at. We're going to get into some controversial, controversial stuff, okay? I think I would actually, I'm not saying that I would be a great programmer, like I'd be one of the best programmers in the world, but I really liked programming. I found it fun. I'm sure that corporate life would beat some of that out of me, but like the the day-to-day -day duties of like writing code, when you get to write code, I think I would enjoy. I think I wouldn't be necessarily an enormous fan of the meetings, but at least there might be like free LaCroix, depending on where you're working. Like, I, I think I could definitely live with myself as a software program. Again, I'm not saying I would be the VP, I'd be the CTO at Google. I'm just saying I think I, I would be able to get down with it. And for once, I'm actually speaking with like a slight amount of experience, at least on the academic side. It's like one of the very few jobs on this list I'm not completely ignorant to. Risk management. Again, I only have the slightest understanding of what risk management even means. I think you have to be managing tens of millions of dollars for this to matter. Because this isn't like, watch out for the, yeah, watch out for that manhole cover. Like, isn't this like, oh, you know, you're overinvested in Croatian petroleum. You should find something that doesn't correlate with that. You should invest in uh, Australian lamb, you know, like that. I don't know. I think I could, I think I could do it. I don't know what it is, but I think I could, I think I could do it. That ain't risk management.
Hold on. What is risk management? Don't say it. Add, add, add. Oh, it's for the identification, evaluation, prioritization of risks followed by coordinated and economical application of resources to minimize, monitor, and control the probability or impact of unfortunate events or to maximize realization of opportunities. Thanks for nothing. So, I'm applying risk management when I like don't go for thirds at the buffet because I'm like, I might be too full. That's risk management. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a real job I don't understand, so welcome to be. I would be a terrible policeman. I, it's like some of the danger of firefighting. So it's, it's not a safe job. Um, also, I, really, I don't think anybody likes to tell people bad news. But I think I like it even less than the average person. I, I think it would break my heart to pull people over and be like, do you know how fast you were going? And they'd be like, you know, crying and stuff like that. I don't think I could do it. I think I, w I would be bad at it. I do want to look up their license plates, but there's got to be other jobs where you get the power to look up people's license plates. You could work at the DMV? Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. Maybe I'll get a part-time job at the DMV. I just don't think I would be good at this. I don't like any of the aspects of police work. Paperwork. I kind of like driving. I don't really want to drive that fast, though. Got to have the siren on all the time. I bet your ears probably hurt. I don't want to arrest anybody. I don't want to have to look through someone's pockets, see if they got anything sharp. I don't, like, it just doesn't, I don't, it doesn't seem like it's for me, honestly. A physical therapist? I think I would be very not good at this. I think this it is small talk, but it's like even worse for me than small talk because you also have to kind of be someone's support to lean on. Like the only physical therapist I have experience with is when uh, Corporal James Rhodes, also known as Rhodey, when he... Um, had his arc reactor shot out in Captain America Civil War and he crashed to the earth. And then he had to learn how to walk again on like those two parallel bars. I don't think I could be like the guy in the white clothes on the other side going like, you can do it. I mean, I could do it, but I would be like, I would be uncomfortable. I don't think I would be good at this. This actually might make chat more annoyed than anything I've ever said here. I think I could be good at customer service, or at least adequate. I don't like using the phone, but I'm very good on the phone. You're too angry? That's because I have the ability to be angry at chat without being punished. If I would lose my job for being angry, then I would be like, I'm sorry, or like, we're sorry that happened to you. You got all these jobs, you can't be mad. Nobody wants to have like a mad accountant. Like you go into his office and he's like, why'd you go to Starbucks so much this year? You know, like you got to put on a veneer of politeness for every single job on this list. I kind of do do customer service. That's true. I do customer service work from home. 99% of my job is copy paste form apologies for people via email. I believe that. Honestly, I will also say that's kind of based because like it sucks when you complain about something and you get a copy pasted email because you, you're like, no, you don't understand. My problem is actually like, I'm special. But like most of the time, you're like, you know, you're probably not. Like you, other people have got bigger problems. You just need like a day to cool off or something like that. I don't know. I don't want to make people upset. 
But in saying I don't want to make people upset, I think that means I would be better at customer service. So I think I got to put it in like the B. You might not believe this, but I'm actually like very accommodating. I try to let people know when we're going to do, sorry, sir, we'll get to you in a second. I'd like to apologize uh, for the delay. I'm very, I try to keep people on the same page. If they fire the first shot, though, I don't know. Okay, genuinely, I think I would be a mixed lawyer. I do, when I watch a movie where a lawyer fucking goes off in their closing statements and the whole jury's like crying, I'm like, I can do that. But I don't know if I've got the tenacity to like read through hundreds and hundreds of hours of case law and be like, here's the similarities to this case. Ooh, this case is bad for us. Let's just hope that the other side doesn't know that this one exists. Like, I, I don't think I would be good at that. And it's got to be like, what, it's like 5% trials, 95% meeting with somebody and paperwork and reading what I would describe as boring material is like 99 to 1, man. But I don't I think I, if I were going to be a lawyer, I would want to be a trial lawyer, even though that's harder. Because like I have a lawyer that like I talk to about like business stuff, but like his job seems kind of boring. Like it seems a little cushy. Don't get me wrong. But it's like once a year, he's like, pay me five hundred dollars so I can file this paperwork. And I'm like, OK, here you go. And he's like, have a great year. I don't want to be the guy on the other end of that. Maybe fiscally it would be nice, but like it just kind of seems a little... Uh, maybe that would be great, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> actually sounds okay. I don't know, man. I think I, think I would be a B-tier lawyer. When you look at the nexus. Like all the factors involved. I think I could do it. I think I would be like a, if, if I was like a, if, is there any way to just fast track like right up to senior partner? Cause like, I don't want to do the case law, but I think I could be the guy who's like, Hey, all you like Harvard law students read through all this case law. Give me the gist of it. And then I would weave the web of ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You'll have to excuse me. I'm not used to seeing all these big glass buildings. I may be but a humble Canadian prosecutor, but is a man not entitled to defend his own flesh and blood? You, like, I think I could do that for sure. That's my lawyer voice. Anyway, I think I would be okay. Compliance, regardless of what the compliant, the only thing I comply with is instructions from a higher authority than myself. Trying to get things to fit into the right spot. This needs to be here. This needs to be here. I'm not good at it. I'm not detail oriented. Also, I don't know what you are. What the heck? Isn't, isn't compliance like, oh, you were on that podcast, but you didn't say it's not financial advice. It's just for entertainment at the end. Like that's what compliance is, right? Not at all. I think that's what compliance is. It's making sure that you didn't break the law, right? We prevent insider trading. It's about ethics. Complying with regulations to avoid fines. I think I would be ass at this. I do not think I would be good at it. Now, again, like I'm getting myself in trouble here. You know, I'm, I'm bogle-pilled. I think I would do okay as a financial analyst from the perspective of 
I know what it's like, you know, to look at a company's year end report and think that you're gleaning data from the trailing 12 month revenue uh, versus what it was like three years ago. And then, oh, the growth rate cumulatively is around 10 percent a year. And also the return on investment capital is so high. The only thing is also with the, with the data. Doesn't really seem like. Average financial analyst actually like outperforms just buying the index and doing nothing. So I just, I mean, I think I could be, I think I would find some fulfillment in this. And also I think it, it could trick me into thinking that I'm good at the job. But even if you're like great at the job, I think that you would still just be better off buying the index. So I don't know. I would try to put myself in here as like a B. Software engineer at a not tech company. You uh, expect too much of me. Like I don't like you could be a software engineer at like a vacuum store. You do nothing at a non tech company. I worked at a non tech company as a software engineer. You make the vacuum website, but don't they, I think web developers on here. You would get so much praise. But I also feel like one of the things about being like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm ignorant to this on the corporate level. I feel like if you're hired to be like a junior programmer, you have a lot of meetings, you have a little coding, and that's like, that's it, right? I feel like if you're hired to be the software engineer at a non-tech company, aren't you also like the guy who does all the IT? Like, aren't you fixing the printer, the fax machine, and, you know, like locking people out when you're about to fire them and wiping their credentials? It's actually the opposite. It's the opposite Oh, it's a lot of coding and no meetings or is the opposite like that's what you do at a tech company? That would be a sysadmin. Yeah, but if you're the software engineer at Bill's Furniture Store, you're kind of you're wearing multiple hats, right? That's a very small company. Honestly, you don't know Bill. He's got 150 locations throughout the American Southwest. How do you feel about that? It's the largest furniture store in New Mexico. Holy shit, Bill. I, I'm stalling. I don't know where to put this. I mean, there's a lot that I don't know where to put. Like, I think a software engineer, you know what? I don't know. Anytime they say engineer versus programmer, I, I demote myself slightly. I don't think I'm ready to take on the, the big E word. Operations analyst? Almost anything with analyst. I think genuinely I would be in like the D tier. Construction is not even close. I think that basic construction would be the best for me. Like, I think if it was just, like, lifting drywall, I have the faculties for it. Everything that's more advanced than that, I mean, that... I, do not give me a tool. Uh, you need an F tier for this? I'm like, I, honestly, it, it has to be at, like, the bottom D. I don't... I'm... I can't believe I have a college degree. I don't know what any of these jobs are. <laughs> what the hell is a biomedical engineer? <laughs> I have a biology degree. <laughs> I'm a biomedical engineer. What do you do? You build like prosthetics or look anytime. This is why like, if it was like biomedical scientist, I would be like, okay, I don't love lab work, but I can make it happen. Anytime there's like an engineer attached to it, I'm like, I know I'm going to have to open up AutoCAD and I'm going to be like, what the fuck? 
what am I looking at? I can't rotate this shit in my head. Like, if I'm being honest, it's probably, like, in the D tier again. Or, I mean, maybe in the C tier, because at least I have a relevant degree, but... I mean, like, this is getting embarrassing. Here's what I'll say. I... I have a... Here's my, my suite of soft skills, okay? I'm an effective communicator. Very skilled at time management. I'm an efficient worker, believe it or not. I'm good with people, particularly in a corporate environment, okay? So I'm not going to say that I'm a great customer service facing individual because then you might make me face customers and provide them with service, which I don't want to do. But within the context of an organization, we're not going to have an interpersonal conflict where, you know, I told someone to shut their mouth. I've heard the story 20 times, okay? Like, I know, I know how the game is played. I like to get along with people. I think I'm good at speaking. I think I have a, an analytical mind for processes, yet I have no hard skills whatsoever. I should just do like an aptitude test and see what job it spits out. That's that's what I should because I'm real. These are so STEM minded that like this is a problem for me. I would watch that. That would be better. Okay, we're not gonna stall anymore. Like product manager, that seems like a job that's all soft skills. I could be wrong, but that feels like B tier to me. Financial advisor. I actually think is kind of like a goaded job. Now you do have to make conversation with people. But like I I meet with a financial advisor who watches my content. And I don't mean I I hope this doesn't come across as rude cuz I'm not going to say like his job is easy, but I think once you've learned it, it's pretty much it's almost the same thing every time. You go in, you look at their finances, you know, and then you tell them you should save more money. You should uh, invest and here's how you can invest. And then they suggest something that the bank sells. And then you go look it up on Vanguard or Charles Schwab and you buy the version that said like 0.19 MER instead of 1.2. And then like, yeah, you're getting their risk tolerance and like, what are your goals? Do you want to buy a house in 20 years? Good one. Do you want to like retire at some point? Like that's... You're just getting people's goals, their risk tolerance, and then you're like, we got the perfect thing for you. I think I could totally do this. I, I think I could be an S-tier financial advisor, which does not mean like I'm great at stock picking or like I'm insanely good with money. I just think that like, it's kind of like being like a, like a personal trainer, not to be rude, but like, you know, it's kind of like being like a, nutritionist for somebody who doesn't have dietary restrictions you're like well you're, what's your goal oh you want to lose 10 pounds here's how you do it then you see him six months later and you're like how's that working out for you corporate strategy let's be honest i think i honestly i gotta put it in the c tier because like i I feel like I come up with great ideas for businesses. Like McDonald's should sell the hash browns after 11 a.m. It's purely soft skills. Here's the thing. I, I don't like small talk, but I'm actually, I feel like I'm pretty good at meetings. Like when there's a theme for the conversation, that's where I shine. It's where you got to be like, uh, how about the Danishes, you know? Anyway. <laughs> Architect. I would not be good at. This is like drawing and engineering in one, right? This is the same job. Like, it's, it's two jobs that are bad for me mashed together. You are designing something from your brain, um... But then also people have to live in it and like the tubes have to go to the right spot. I do not, I could not do this. Now I'll tell you, teacher's an interesting one. 
I think I would be like a pretty good professor if I was knowledgeable enough to be able to pass down any information to like college students. But I was not well suited as like a, an elementary school teacher. And it's 100% for just listen to the way I talk. This is not the kind of thing that like eight year old kids are like, that's my favorite teacher. Like I drone, I use words that are too big for no reason whatsoever. Like I'm not, I don't, re, I, I, children don't naturally, you know, like sometimes you'll be at like a, like a party and there'll be like one aunt who is always like, well, babies, you know, and like all the kids come over to the aunt and then she's like, whoa, look at this. You got it. What is that a duck? I'm not like that. Okay. I'm like that with my own daughter, but I'm not like that with, uh, with other kids, you know? So like, I was not a great teacher for classroom management, but I think that I embody the skills of a good teacher. I think I could be a good like high school teacher. As long as I was in like an academically minded 12th grade class. I think they would be like, this guy's cool. He listens to Yola Tango. But like in fourth grade, maybe they're going to tear me apart. This is a high school high. What are you going to do? I just go home after it. You're just like a little kid. You think you're going to say anything in class that's going to like wither my personality? I'm like two times your age. It's nothing that happens. You were born in like fucking 2004. What are you going to say? You weren't even alive when I Heart Huckabees came out. Oh, I'm bald. Good one. You know, like five years ago, you cried in sixth grade in front of all your classmates because you pooped your pants. Now you're trying to act like a hard ass. That was five years ago. Five years ago, I looked exactly the same. You can't hurt me, okay? Bro, you live with your parents. Your mom pays for every single one of your meals. You probably paid for like less than five meals in your whole life. I pay for all of them. For other people too. What are you going to say? What can you say that would take me down? I'm bald. Okay, good one. Hilarious. Anyway. Chemical engineer. I'm bad at chemistry and also anything with engineering I'm bad at. Now, project manager... I got to think about that because I think that this is somewhat soft skills. It's people management, but some hard skills as well. Like Malv, you did this. I know. I don't know if you're still here. Could I'm not asking, would I be as good as you? Am I capable of doing this job? I'm just waiting for it. Like, Malv is very detail-oriented. He gets his hands dirty. He's into the minutia. I'm definitely more like a big picture kind of guy. He's left. Call him. It's soft skills plus organization. In that, honestly, just hearing that, first off, sounds like a good fit for Malv. He's a soft skills guy, but he's organized. I'm a soft skills guy. I'm not organized. Malv, 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 Malv. How would I be as a project manager? Not as good as I am as a streamer, obviously, but like, would I, would I be capable of doing the job? You would be good with the, hold on. You would be good with the money and scheduling stuff. Slips five dollars under the table. Thank you. I think I would. I that gives me the strength to put myself up in the B. Investment banking. I apologize. There's one person in chat who just keeps getting more and more tilted whenever I talk about finance. But I listen to like a lot of finance, economics podcasts and stuff like that. They always talk about how like at Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan and stuff like that, all the 
like junior investment bankers and financial analysts they're working like 100 hour weeks and stuff like that and i'm like fucking why dude just buy vt sacks like it's just you're you're wasting your life just to have a chance to perform worse than the s&p 500 it's just like i just don't get it man like why are you working so hard the thing does its thing by itself is that's different from investment banking i get well in investment bank are you like um is this when the falcon comes to try to get a loan for his boat so that he can fix it up and go shrimping um even though his sister wants to sell it so that she can move and then they tell him that he's like not financially viable. That's what an investment banker does. That sucks, dude. Oh, I would def I would hate that. It's also convincing old people you can beat the S&P 500. I would not be good at this. I would be like the investment banker that keeps a copy of One Up on Wall or not One Up on Wall Street, that's the opposite. I would keep a copy of a random walk down Wall Street in my briefcase and be like Hey, we've got some great funds, but before you buy in, maybe you'd like to take a little read of this and then send me an email. I would, I would give him the red pill. The burden Malkiel pill. Anyway, I don't think I would be good at this. I also don't know what corporate development is. That seems like one of those jobs that's kind of not real, like you made up a job title to match what you were already doing. Like, this is not something that existed 100 years ago. This is mergers and acquisitions for other companies. And also HR and recruiting. Training managers and C-level individuals. Let's be honest. I, some of those are soft skills. I'll put myself in the C tier. What I realize is like a lot of these jobs, especially like corporate jobs... Let's, let's farm some base, okay? I feel like the lower you are in a corporation, the harder your job is. Which is why every time we end up in like a corporate job on this board, I'm like, well, if you could just drop me in as the CEO, I think I'd do fine. I'm like, I, I could not like work myself all the way up to be like, you know, from, from the, I couldn't start as a janitor and become the CEO of McDonald's. But if you were like, you have the, you know, you could be the CEO of McDonald's. I'd be like, what the business just runs itself, right? People are not in any danger of not buying Big Macs anytime soon. I feel like there's some truth, like you have inertia, right? Like, just keep it up. <laughs> anyway. I'm sure there's stress, but like, you, know, you get fired as a... You ever see what CEOs get paid? You get fired as a CEO, even if you're like ass. You just get hired to be like on the board of directors at another company. Plus, you get severance. Like, this shit is crazy, man. Anyway, let's be honest. I would be absolutely horrible as a carpenter. Um, I would also be insanely bad as a nurse. Uh, I think you have to have thick skin. You have to have both small talk and big talk. And uh, every day is very hard I think I think I would be very bad as a nurse I think I would be horrible as a civil engineer this is easy man now I think a firmware engineer the closer things get to the metal the worse I am at interfacing with them But I still think this could be in like... Sorry, I meant, to, I meant to put that in C. Because I feel like you got to get... You got to know something that... You, you have to know one level deeper than I know. I know the compiler. Like at this point, I think you got to know like... What, what the chipset is. And I don't have an answer for that. 
It's more like electrical engineering. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I don't. I kind of don't even know what firmware is. Hardware is the material components. Software is the code running on top of it. Firmware is like, is when you put like a little mustard on the hamburger bun so it sticks to the, the onion better. Drivers. Oh, man. All right. I'm going to leave it in C, but I might want to dip it down a little bit. I, investment research, again, like, I don't know. I think I would be fine at it. Like, I think it... But I also think that being good at it means nothing. So who cares? Electrician, we've established. I would be terrible at it. Um, I will say, I think I would be a good pharmacist. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong without telling me it would take eight years of school. Because we already know this. I feel like that we've talked about it before. I have respect for the pharmacist now. But isn't... Most of your job as a pharmacist, and I'm not saying it's not important, but most of your job as a pharmacist is just telling your patients not to kill themselves accidentally. And making sure that the doctor didn't write a prescription that would kill your patient. It is a job where you have to talk a lot, but at the same time, you also have that dividing line. So I feel like if you ever needed space, you could just be like, I got to go to the back for a second. And then you just like walk back into the shelves, right? Like doctors write terrible prescriptions all the time. So you're checking doctors, okay? You're explaining to patients how to take the medication. I think I would... Like, I don't want to be a pharmacist, but I think I would be okay at it. Like, you have to know drug interactions. That's something that actually, like, I think I could handle. I could not build a cube out of wood. But I think I could be like, oh, you can't take, you know, this pill with benzene. It'll give you anal fissures. I think I could just remember that. Like, that's how my brain works. Plus, I'm sure they got, like, a database or something. Like, is that way, when you're about to, like, fill it, isn't there, like, some machine learning layer that's like, are you sure you want this patient to die? Because that's what you're doing. There's got to be. It's not just, like, one dude with a cowboy hat being like, ah, I've never had this one before, right? I think I could do it. I'm not saying A tier, but I would put it in the B tier. Uh, I have a friend who is an environmental engineer, and I don't know what the fuck he says ever at all. Nothing he's, everything he says sounds like sorcery to me. Oh, we are working on this project. We have to buffer this out of this wastewater and then build a spawning pool. Like it does, I, I, obviously that comes with the skill of the job, but it's like, again, it's like chemistry plus engineering, but then also plus like, not botany, but you know what I mean, like plus a little bit of biology, all of which I'm bad at despite having a degree in biology, but uh, not good. Now I will say, I think I would be a fine web developer. I would be, I would rather work on the back end just shuffling data from point A to point B, transforming the data, shuffling it back, sending it out to like an API. I don't want to actually, I don't want any end user to look at what I'm making, but I can do it. I'm going to, I'm going to put that up in the B tier, but I would need to have some serious front end people I guess yeah you could be I guess you could be a back end web developer yeah that makes a lot of sense I mean do like so here's the thing one of my favorite classes I took when I was in software engineering school was Node.js I don't know if it was just because of the the teacher but I felt like 99% of that class was like API design and then the teacher would always just be like and then just spit out the data in like a text field. And I was like, oh, fuck. 
That's uh, I had another like my my Java, not JavaScript, but my Java professor on one of our exams made us write like a Yahtzee app in Java that displayed the dice rolls. And I was like, I basically hate you right now. The Node.js guy was just like, yeah, I don't know. Just when you got the data and it looks right, just pop it on the screen when you press a button. I was like, thank God. Anyway. Execution trader. I don't know what you are. And as a result... I mean, look, anything related to finance, even if I don't believe in it, I think I could probably do it. <laughs> it kind of sounds cool, right? You're like, you're, you're a market maker. You, you find, you know, pairs of people buying and selling something like, I think I could do that and go out for a, an early two cocktail lunch or something. I think I could figure it out. HVAC would be horrendous. Wouldn't, can't even pretend that this would be, uh, this would be plausible for me. Um, you're right, I would probably be better as the HVAC system than fixing the HVAC system. I would be a terrible massage therapist. It's all small talk with strangers and touching people. No chance. I would be an awful mechanical engineer. I don't know what, and apart from software engineer, which doesn't even really feel like a traditional engineering job to me, I don't know if there's a job in real engineering that I could do. Have I ever told you about how, um, it, it, this is just, this is me consistently throughout my life. In the eighth grade, our teacher gave us like a, a fun engineering project. She didn't call it engineering, but she's like, you guys are going to build something. And here, all you have, you have a deck of cards and you have to build the tallest structure that you can. And it will last, it has to last like 30 seconds standing upright. Nobody would like, you know, blow on it or anything like that. But, you know, you just basically, essentially it was like build a house of cards. You can't use any glue. You can't use any tape. So I try to build a house of cards. It keeps falling down. I get like a few rows up. I knock it over. I get a few rows up. I knock it over. Um, eventually I'm like, okay, we got like 10 minutes left. What if we just cut the cards in half and then stack them? Then at least it will be twice as tall as a normal deck. Cut the cards in half. Tried to stack them. Because they were so small, they didn't stack well. Instead, it just became a pile. And no joke, the teacher was like, hey, just so you know, there was one group whose house of cards actually ended up being smaller than if they just stacked the cards in the box. And we were like, that's us for sure. So that's about the level of engineering acumen that I have as a baseline. I remember seeing like some of the other projects when they came in and there's like some people cut like slits in the cards and then made like interlocking bases to serve as the foundation of their house of cards. I was like, nah, man, just, just stack them. Anyway, network developer... This seems like programming, but like when you're a genius, when you're like a super genius, which I am not, but it's still programming. I think I will maybe put it around firmware engineer. Like network for me is kind of like, it's like the people who made the compiler. Like, I think I could write a book, but I couldn't make the English language. I could write an app in Node.js, but like I could not send it to California in an instant. You know what I mean? That's a network engineer is just the person who runs the cables. I think C is still fair. You just you just plug stuff and combine RJ forty fives. I've seen the like we've had the cable guy come over and install things through our house. No, that's the technician. All right, I don't know. Now, honestly, I mean, like it's not like we're there's no company. They're not going to be lonely down here in the D tier. <clears throat> Proprietary trader. I don't know what you are. A plumber. We don't need to go there. 
Uh, home health aid. Don't be mad. I think this is just like kind of having a baby. Like this is sort of what I do right now. Not for like a job. But it's like if you took the baby and made them the size of an adult human. It's way worse. I believe that. But I'm going to be honest. I don't think I would have a problem wiping someone's ass. I would rather wipe someone's ass than go into a building that was like a little on fire. And I would rather go into a building that's a little on fire than have to make 40 minutes of small talk with my barber client. I don't think I would... I'm not saying I would enjoy it. Like, I'd be like, oh, I love wiping ass. But that doesn't really bother... Like, it's not even that... Like, I... The ass is, like, only a little bit worse than just having to interact with them to begin with. To be honest. Based? I know it's more than dealing with poop, but that's what people always come to is like the... It, the I would have a hard time spiritually with watching someone who, you know, used to be in the prime of their life and made all these happy memories in the home and now they're like just slowly decaying and that's what's going to happen to all of us one day as well. But like, you know, in terms of the day-to-day -day duties of the job... I think I could handle it. I, I mean, I'm not saying it would be even in the B tier, but I think I, would, I could be in the C tier. Aerospace engineer, let's be honest. So I actually was a, maybe not a database analyst. That's a little bit more, you know, advanced than I was involved with. But uh, I was a DBA for one summer. You're going to laugh at me. I started from zero. And I didn't know what I was doing. I built the database. It, I was paid complete dog shit for the record. And this was at a not tech company. This is like a culmination of all the jobs on the list, right? Um, when I got the job, I mean, I just, I'm, this is how I think I have soft skills. Like during the interview, they were like, how would you approach this problem? And it was two non-technical people inter uh, interviewing me. And they're like, well, I would first see what the inputs are for the database, and then I would try to build the database according to the specifications, and then I would uh, ask the client what they want the reports to look like, and then I would design the reports to look like what the clients want to look like. And they gave me the job, even though I had no database or any programming experience essentially at all. And then they were like, yeah, we had it between you and like a computer science student. And we're so glad we went with you. And I was like, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I was just picturing like the computer science student didn't interview that well and probably gave them like a real answer. And they were like, we don't understand what this guy's talking about. And as a result, we feel threatened. But this guy was like quite affable. We think we can work with. They basically hired like who they wanted to work with, who they wanted to like eat lunch with. And then, so I, uh, you got to remember, it was like a 10 week job. I had no idea what I was doing at all. The fact that the thing functioned was insane. We built a, data, a, a small database from scratch. And I remember like the last few days of my job, I wrote like this rigorous technical manual. Because I was, I was honest with them. And I was like, if you ever move these files, I don't know what will happen to the database, but I'm pretty sure it's going to break forever. And I'm not going to know how to fix it because I'm going to be long gone. Like I'm going to be back in school and I'm not going to be able to help. And I remember I got an email like a year later that was like, we had to move some, you know, we had to move the files off the database computer and then we can't uh, figure out how to get it to work anymore. And I was just like, that sounds, like, plausible. So, like, it's not tough shit. Like, I've... They basically hired somebody that didn't know what they were doing. And I was like, I made it work, but it's put together with, like, nothing. It's so flimsy. And then it was like, they just, like, moved a file off of one hard drive onto another.
I didn't scam them. We exploited each other. There's a database administrator who's probably getting paid like 90 G's out of university. They were paying me like $9.50 an hour. It was, it was bullshit all the way down. Anyway. So, I mean, I can do this. <laughs> Especially now that I got some experience. Uh, technology consulting. I feel like when it comes to consulting, I think I could be good as long as it requires no knowledge of the business. Because I think, again, I'm a relatively good speaker, but when the, it's like, well, you know, here you got the, uh, you, you know, you got the wrong technology stack. I don't know about that. I don't think I could, uh, I don't think I'd be great at that. You'd be a good fart consultant. Everyone thinks they'd be a good consultant. That, so just because everybody thinks that doesn't mean everybody's wrong. It's possible everybody could be a great consultant. How's that for data analysis? You know what? Where's the statistics? I'm, I'm moving data analysts up a tier just because of that consequence right there. So true. I don't know. Let's go see. An occupational therapist... I'm about to say what could possibly be the stupidest thing of all time. Is this someone you talk to to figure out what job you should have? Hey, Bixby. What is an occupational therapist? Healthcare professionals specializing in occupational therapy. What does that mean? It's a physical therapist for work-related stuff. So the guy that Peter talks to in office space is not an occupational therapist. That's just a therapist he's talking to about his occupation. I always thought that that was an occupational therapist. Like it's someone you talk to, to it gives you advice about your job. That guy was a hypnotist. I forgot about that part. To be honest, I forgot that that guy was a hypnotist. That's true. That's a career coach. I don't know what you are. I think I would be a horrible therapist, though. And it's not because I'm not sympathetic to people. I just don't think... I, I don't think I could be the person leading the interaction. But I feel like that's how you have to be as a therapist, right? Like you have to be like, you know, here's the plan of what we're going to do. Um, and like, I'm going to give you a guide for that. And then I'm going to ask you some questions and then you're going to talk a lot. I think that I would be not good at it. Like if people came in, I'd be like, why are you here today? And they'd be like, I'm really stressed out. And I'd be like, no kidding. Like, I, I'm glad that there's good therapists out there. I just don't think that I would be, you know, one of them. Therapists are told not to lead conversations. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I got to do one that's just like the job titles you would see in like a Sesame Street book. Like, I was kind of hoping that this would be like, like two engineers and then like 10 different kinds of taxi cab driver, truck driver, uh, Uber driver, bus driver. Like I, I, I garbage truck driver. I thought it was going to be like that. Instead, there's like one driver and then there's like 20 engineers, like corporate strategists. Um, let's just say low. Now you're going to flip your lid. I think I could hack it as a truck driver. Not... Now, but in like an alternate life, if I had chosen some different paths, I enjoy driving. I, I don't even need the stereo. I could just, like just looking at the horizon is enough for me to be entertained while I'm driving. I understand the duties of the job are 
hard and also long, okay? But I think I could do... I would rather be a taxi driver. I think. But I think I could do, like, truck drive. I mean, this is, like, one of the simulator games that appeals to me. Like, I, like I get. So I would at least put it up in the A tier. I don't even know how a car works, though. So this is, like, fortuitous uh, juxtaposition. So I think I would be, like, a horrible automotive engineer. But if somebody designed and built it, I think I could get from Des Moines to Boise for sure. App developer. I think I would, I could do fine with it. But again, it's kind of like the closer I am to like the back end, the better it is. App development obviously has some back end stuff, but it's like, you know, web development is like a little saddled on both. And then app developer is like make everything shiny and sticky and gorgeous. And, you know, so I think probably I, I'd still put myself maybe in the B tier there, but I think, again, financial consulting. I'm just going to say I get it, okay? I'm, I'm not trained for it. I'm just going to say I get it. Graphic designer, don't make me laugh. It's another one that's going to make people slightly mad, I'm sure. But, yo, you can't even see it yet. It's dietitian. How bad could it, like, how hard could it be? I don't think you ever have to tell somebody they're dying. You know, oh, you can't eat wheat. Uh, I got some bad news for you. Doesn't it seem like you're doing a lot of, like, you know, telling the same people the same thing every day? Or the other thing, and this is not fair to dietitians. But I also feel like the other aspect of dietitian is like the more specific the advice, like maybe the worse they are at their job. Like I feel like if you're a dietitian and you're like, well, you're eating like way too many saturated fats, you need to like replace this with kale, you know? Then you're like a good dietitian. If you're like, you got to only consume clear liquids and like foods that start with an L when Mercury's in retrograde. I think that's when I'm like, you're doing too much and it's working against you. I'm getting question marks, but I'm also getting lulls. That's a nutritionist, not a dietitian. Okay. I mean, honestly, I feel like I could do this. Like, I don't think, I mean... I get that it's like small talk, but again, at least it's structured around like, you know, they come in, you're not like, hey, tell me about yourself. You're like, okay, what's your goal? And they're like, lose weight. And then you're like, okay, stop eating pretzels every night. And they're like, no. And you're like, okay, see you next week. I think, I don't think there's any reason. Like you've heard me, I'm not the, I know the theory for like what's healthy and what's not healthy, unless you have like specific dietary concerns, like a gluten intolerance or whatever. But I just sometimes I'm like, I would rather eat three spoonfuls of peanut butter than adhere to those principles. Just because I don't have six pack abs doesn't mean like I'm not capable of telling other people how to get six pack abs. Like it's, it's simple. It's hard to do, but it's simple, right? Anyway. Petroleum engineer, let's be honest. UX designer, probably even worse than a petroleum engineer. I do not think I could be a good UX designer, but I think I would be a great UX tester. And I don't do this to be like a funny guy, like, you know, press any button, I hit the power button, and then I go, it doesn't work. It's just actually like how my brain works. I think some people are like, they, they look at something and like they know how to interface with it. I'm not like that. I'm like, I'm literally like the worst possible consumer. In, like, let me give you an example. I have read the, the Don Norman book, The Design of Everyday Things. And it's very like, 
it's an inspirational book to me because it talks about like why you should design things so that they, if possible, they can only be interacted with in one way. For example, why does a push door have a handle on it? A handle is something you wrap your hand around in order to pull. If like uh, it's ambiguous, right? A, a push door should just have like a bar, like a, a metal rectangle, because that's all you can do with it. So I love that, and that resonates with me. But I, this is how my brain works. Some doors that I interact with have like a chrome circle, and the circle says push on it. They are indicating that the handle should be pushed in order to get the door to open up. One out of every 10 times, I try to push on the inert chrome circle. And that's because I'm stupid, but it's also because it's designed badly. Why did you make something that looks like a button that says push if that's not what's supposed to be pushed? Like, I'm, I'm basically a robot. This is the same reason that I'm, I'm always talking about, like, technical writing, is that, like, it's not designed for the stupidest person who's using it. It's designed for, like, the average person. And the average person is, like, a standard deviation above me when it comes to this kind of stuff. Anyway. I, I don't think I would be good at, at UX design. But again, I think I would be a great representative customer, or, or tester, I should say. And then, um, I mean, management consulting? Seems like soft skills. All right, so I'm effectively... Um, basically cut out for like less than 10 things, none of which requires any real skills. Kate told us about all the things you break because it's designed badly. Sometimes I get, and it's, I don't get annoyed with Kate over this, I get annoyed at like the manufacturer. Like I broke a baby toy like a year ago. Let me explain what it is to you, okay? It's like a, it's a sphere, but then there's like a little cylinder coming out of the top of the sphere. So it's supposed to be like a robot's head with a little, like, almost a chef's hat coming out of it. The chef's hat is inset into, like, the top of the head. There's other toys that came in this set that when you press a button, they squeak. So the first time I saw this toy, I picked it up and went to push the button, and it went snap, and then the, the head was, like, permanently jammed into the toy, and it won't come out now. And I'm like, why the... Why did they design this shit to look like a button if you're not supposed to press the button? Like, it's... Shit drives me crazy, man. So many... Th and I don't think you know it on... Like, if your... Brain works differently, let's call it normally, I think you just accept that the world requires some interpretation. Like, there needs to be a... Your brain needs to go, how do they want me to do this? I just look at it and I go, this shit looks like a button, so I'm going to press it. Why'd you press it so hard? Ain't nothing but a peanut. Anyway, that's all I got. By the way, if you're just joining me and you're like, my job's in the D tier, this is a list of how I would do with these jobs. Spiritually or... Um, you know, with respect to the duties. So don't take offense. 